Gracious, 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 good morning. I greet you in the only name that matters so far as I am concerned. Don't take that away from me. Jesus Christ, the Savior, whom be glory forever and ever. And before we move one more second forward, let us put those hands together and give God some praise. Who woke you this morning? Blood running warm in your veins. Let's give God some praise. Oh, you may not be able to run like you once did or do many things that you used to do, but it is in the Lord we move and have our continued, come on, give God some praise in this cyber sanctuary Bible study room. Yes, when I think about God's goodness, you know, I, I really don't want to get too emotional here. I used to really worry and concern myself. How is it that suddenly emotions would come and there would be these eruptions in my spirit? been and used to hear it all the time across the chasm of the years from various church members oh you just too thin skin oh you just too sensitive oh you just to look god says that i am fearfully and wondrously made and then i found out well they used to say you know apples don't fall too far from the tree <clears throat> well I don't know how it all fell out, but it turns out that there are some unquestionable, irrefutable similarities between me and my dad. So I'm, I'm proud. I'd rather be one given to emotions, one touched. Yeah, it puts me in good company by make no mistake about it. I am not professing nor declaring to be greater than anybody else. I'm just asking, isn't it time for us to start appreciating who God has made us? Isn't it time for us to embrace our best selves? Do you know, God does in God's world what God chooses and God uses whomever God wills. And by the way, it has nothing to do with our ages or our hometowns. Pedigree or no degree. You better get right with God <laughs> and do it now. And uh, so I want to call your attention to the gospel according to St. Luke. Pastor, didn't you just preach from Luke? Yes, I did. Stick with me. I want to call it from St. Luke's gospel, chapter one. Hmm, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, also want to take a look at verses 28 through 33. Cut your little slack by about five verses. And since we just had it, got that word, got your Bible, I want you to read it. I want you to read it this time because I want to redeem the time. Here we are. Bless God two days away from December 25th, day we celebrate our Savior's birth. And I want to go back and, if you will, throw back. Some of you who've been around in this ministry across the chasm of a few years, you might even recall, maybe, <laughs> when a part of our Bible study was dissected breaking down, explaining, if you will, what was preached sometimes prior to the sermonic moment or message and sometimes review. Well, we've preached most of this pericope or this completed thought in the sacred text. I want to go back now and go over it again, especially because it is appropriate for this season. Truth of the matter is, is good for any season. I think that so often we are anemic as if we suffer from mm, a lack of something 
zest, zeal, vigor, vim, and vitality. Grandma say, oh, boy, you just getting old. No, that's not what I mean, baby. I mean we have to give ourselves good nutrition if we want to have energy. The church of the Lord, Jesus Christ, can ill afford to stray away from ensuring as best we can that the saints of God, God's people, have a good diet that centers on the very essence of their salvation, our salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let me pause just a bit. Some of you now, you around just a fragment. It's not a whole lot of verses, but you got it. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And Gabriel's greeting, he greets. I did some hopefully, teaching before getting into that elated moment of the preaching where it's sort of, you know, well, you know how it is. It's kind of good. And that's right. And oh, how I long for being able to see your faces and for us to experience worship together. That's also the reason why I'm proceeding, ensuring that I am led of the Spirit of the Lord, taking all of the evidence, all of the science, and then thank God for a big head with a little bit <laughs> of common sense because when we all get to get, what a time, what a time is going to be. And I always know that there will be a few who ain't gonna do right anyhow. So want you to keep yourself safe. Let's live through this. Let's get through this together. Let's see that we in indeed enjoy that we embrace that we experience what god has for us on the other side of covid 19. so gabriel meets mary with words of grace that's in verse 28. god is smiling on this young unknown maiden this young girl we might be tempted to think Zechariah was chosen because he was righteous and a priest, you know. And the angel's greeting to Mary reveals she is chosen solely as a matter of God's grace. By the way, you are who you are, where you are, given the privilege that you have. The duty call that is yours, a service that you are involved in in the kingdom is solely a matter of grace. Mary didn't understand, of course, the angel's greeting. She was deeply troubled by it and tried to figure out what kind of greeting is this in the first place. You know how it is when somebody rolls up on you and says, hey, let me holler at you for a minute. And you don't know exactly what's going on and what their intentions are. And they start giving you all of this mind-blowing comments and commentary. How could she, an unknown woman, be so described by God? Well, come on now. That ain't rocket science. You know that God knows all of you. In some cases, I'm not sure that we know all of us. That ain't new school. That's old school. Don't you remember when the deacons used to holler and pray? And say almost the same prayer verbatim Sunday after Sunday. And part of the line would be, thank you. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. No, all. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I just get excited when I think of, if you will, our patron saints who bore their burden in the heat of the day who stayed steadfast and trusted God, did not lose their zest and zeal for living, and their joy meter was always pegged in the corner mark, full, not empty. Question, do you ever feel like your life is a little too small for God to notice, that you're a little too unimportant, too insignificant for God to be aware of you? Well, maybe that's what Mary felt. 
Just as with Zechariah, the angel explains his message. God has no problem whatsoever meeting us at the point of our understanding. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I think I'll say that again. God has no problem meeting us at the point of our understanding. Well, anyway, you and I have to see in this text, verses 30 through 33, look at just as with Zechariah and the angel is explaining his message, that's what God does. Not only would Zechariah and Elizabeth give birth to the promised forerunner, Mary would give birth to the promised Savior. Gave your promises, she too will conceive. She will call his name Jesus. Now, this is way before. What do you call that thing now when you can go in and make all that funny noise? I still remember years ago being in Wiesbaden, Germany. One of our beloved uh, spiritual daughters was getting ready to give birth to her firstborn and that little, you know what, you ladies know what I'm talking about, and perhaps some of you men too. The sonogram takes a picture, and you can, depending on how the baby's position, well, this, look, this predates that device, yet, oh my God, God knows, baby, and the emissaries of the Holy Awesome Eternal can see something that others find to be obscured, opaque. They are not able to see it. Even told her the name. You call his name Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, there's just something about that name. She said, name him Jesus according to the Bible, gospel according to St. Matthew 121, it means this, he shall save, not soothe, don't get it twisted, he shall save his people from their sins. Mary's son will actually be the son of the most high God. There it is, verse 32, he will be God's own son. This is more than any human could ever have imagined or dreamed. This son will fulfill the promise made to King David hundreds of years earlier. We will get to it when we get back to our study in Samuel. We are in 1 Samuel, but over the next book, 2 Samuel, you'll find this in the 7th chapter. This will be David's son who rules over Israel forever in an everlasting kingdom. And then, of course, verse 34 captures in that first chapter of Luke, Mary's response. Mary sounds a lot like Zechariah when she replies in verse 34, but apparently there is no unbelief in her question. She's not asking, can you do it? Mm -mm, no, she's asking, how will you do it? I think on Sunday... I tried to lay a little stress on the question how. Her question builds on faith. Yes, it does, not unbelief. This is why Gabriel does not rebuke her. Gabriel goes on, just said, God will meet us at our point of understanding. God's representative here, the angelic being Gabriel, gives her an explanation. Again. Look at verse 35, 36, and 37. Aha, a moment of awareness. I knew you would see it. <laughs> to this young girl in this rural countryside, God through Gabriel reveals two of the greatest mysteries in the universe. The incarnation, verse 35, and the trinity. 35, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The end, 
incarnation, God invading all of the premises of a human being's body to the point that it is a delicate but appropriate mixture of deity, divinity, even in our day. Holiness, the right and proper balance in our humanity. Okay, let me try to stay in the zone of study, but I hope I'm explaining that clear enough for you to get it. The Holy Spirit, third person, you were taught since you were a little boy, little girl, God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If you missed it when you were younger, that's all right. Come on, the cyber sanctuary. During this time, this is the place. Let me see if I can catch you up. Fast forward a bit. It is like indeed that you have three fingers on one hand. You know, like when the folk first taught you how to count, how old are you? You put up your fingers. No, no, not that. One more. You stick up that third finger. Well, let me ask you this. You can certainly do more with all three of the fingers reaching to grasp or grab something like the cookies you weren't supposed to have. <laughs> ah. But each one of those fingers, vitally important for the function of the hand. If not, next time try to pick up the cookie without using any fingers at all and see how far you can get with that under normal circumstances. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of God, the Most High, will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Feels like I'm going right over what I've gone over, and I am. That's by design. Don't be calling me up saying, Pastor, did you slip? You just preached this. No, I ain't slipping. I'm giving it again. And you know my favorite statement, because I know some of you love southern fried chicken in particular, and you've had it before. That's why you love it. So let's just slow walk for the next few minutes through this passage and I'll see if I can get you on your way, give you enough time to do what you need to do. Then we'll be listening for the sweet music of your voice when we gather at the one o'clock hour for prayer. By the way, those of you who tip in the prayer room, all quiet at 103, well, you just missed at least 13 minutes of some very rich fellowship. I just sit back and listen to the saints of God laugh and talk with each other, you know. Every once in a while, I'll chime in. But for the most part, oh my goodness, it's a blessing. Come on, do yourself a favor. Join us so you'll be blessed. But God's son takes on himself human flesh in the humility of a babe. God says the Holy Spirit will come upon Mary. What is God talking about? God does not mean God mm, doing everything alone in isolation. There are some people slanderously believe that is what we Christians mean. That's a blasphemous thought. Come on. Come up on brings to mind Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. This is Bible study. Where the Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the deep in creation. It's what Jesus quoted as saying in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. As he was coming into the world, he said, you did not desire sacrifice and offering, but you prepared a body for me. By the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of God the Father, body was prepared for God the Son, who would be brought forth 
into this world. Consider, if you will, the quietude, the tranquility out under the skies with scintillating stars shining in their sockets in glory. That quiet, that hush, that silence pierced, oh yes, by the yelp of a baby. <laughs> Angels gathered around and said, oh well, you know Christmas, don't you? I hope you do. My God, we think of God's greatest ever gift given to us. Hmm. That's the reason for us to stop closing our mouths and opening up our mouths if we can and give God thanks. The greatest gift ever. Christ Jesus, fully God, fully man, making the perfect Savior needed to be God to supply righteousness humans could not achieve. You don't get it on your own. I don't get it. We cannot get it. God sent his son. Jesus needed to be man to supply God the sacrifice that we owe. So Jesus became the only mediator between God and man. The God man. Christ Jesus. He's the only way and the perfect example above all else for us at our point of need and the level of our understanding to get a good glimpse of God and God's work, the love of God, what God does, that you and I may be brought back, reconciled to God. We don't have to stumble at Jesus' deity and Jesus' humanity. The angel assures Mary, and we ought to be assured too, nothing will be impossible with God. The moment you admit the existence of God, well, you've got to deny the impossible. With God, nothing. Hmm. A barren woman, Elizabeth, a virgin woman, both conceived. In fact, that's the God we serve. And so it's been my joy just to have these few moments to sort of go through a portion of what was preached, break it down, revisit it in study, and give you a few other scriptures along the way. There was a fella don't hear his voice anymore. Perhaps he's already slipped away from the scenes of time. I'm sure, come to think of it, many years ago it was that I used to hear it. And at my present state of maturity, <laughs> but he used to say, and now you've heard the rest of the story. <laughs> Listen. I want you to feel in this season, not just your hurt, there's gonna be some of that. I, like you, understand it. I can't even promise you that you won't have periods of crushing loneliness. In fact, the truth of the matter is, we humans are social beings and we long for human touch. I know I do. However, I also want you to be assured of this. God loves you. And there are others, at least I can speak for myself, who love you too. If I start trying to call the role of some of the persons who are the sweethearts of my heart, if I start trying to call the names of some of my brothers who are just so dear, well, 
I wouldn't have time to do it. But I do want you to know one thing. I may not call you as regularly as you want. Or look, some of that's on you too now. Because every person, every member, every visitor, if you visited Peace prior to the pandemic, and if you kept any of the little church bulletins, the number's on it. And so give me a holler. I may not be able to get to everybody at the same time. And whether I call your name or can answer the phone, be assured of this. When I enter into the throne room, into the presence of God, the Holy Spirit does bring so many names and faces. We are in this together. And I haven't any better sense than to believe. We continue to trust God. We'll get through this together and we will be able to discover the amazing, wondrous works, hallelujah, of our God. Have a Merry Christmas. And don't be fussing about socks or ties. By now, you may not even need that either. <laughs> Whatever brings you joy, come together and give God some praise. Thank you again for giving me a few moments of this time to share with you. God bless.